All right, everyone, pop quiz. So when you see a phase graph like that, what's going on? Are the low frequencies behind the high frequencies or not? So I've got my magnitude and my phase graph set up here. And if I add a delay to the test signal, we can see the typical downward sloping of the phase graph. And now this would be a situation where you have an RTA mic up and the speaker is like way up there. So there's a delay, or let's say you're testing a piece of equipment that has some internal amount of latency that it adds to the signal. So typically we have to go to the reference trace and add in the corresponding amount of delay so that the phase graph can once again be zero and we are time aligned. So I've got three different channel strips set up with some linear phase EQs. One of them has got a mid-range filter and then there's a low pass filter and a high pass filter. So completing the entire frequency range with linear phase. So I've added some delays to each of the channel, low, mid, and high. Let's pretend these are speakers stacked on top of each other. And if we take and delay our subwoofers a little bit, you can see that like, oh, we've got our downward slope on the graph, but then the rest of it remains at zero. If we delay our highs a little bit, we can see we've got a bunch of delay on the highs, but the mid doesn't have any delay on it. Now we can take the delay off of the low and the high, and we can just delay the mid a little bit and see what happens there. Yep, see, we've got our downward slope, but just in the mid-range area. The rest of it remains the same. Now look, you have to be careful about interpreting what the phase graph is telling you. So in this instance, I've unwrapped the phase so that as we go down and cross 180 degree mark, it won't jump back up to try to keep things neatly in the middle of the graph. So like, I'm adding delay to the mid-range. Look, we delayed our mid-range, but then we get down here and the graph's like, well, I mean, I can't jump back up. I mean, I gotta keep going because I wanna keep this line super continuous and smooth. Well, it just keeps the high frequency down here. Now look, does this mean that like, oh, the lows are way behind the highs. Well, no, they're happening at the exact same time because we haven't added any delay to either of them. All we did was delay the mid-range, but see, the graph wants to show it to you like this. We could move this line up here, but then this would have to move up here. It doesn't mean that there's a time delay between these two groups of frequencies. It just means that this is how the graph is going to show it to you because it wants to keep that line unbroken. Now, I went ahead and added 1,000 milliseconds to everything so that we can not only delay the mid-range and see what happens there, but if we also move it forward in time, you can see that it goes up. So the thing about the phase graph is that like these frequencies here aren't really thinking about these frequencies up here. Each frequency is only thinking about the one directly on either side of it. So if you get here and suddenly, yes, the frequencies are becoming more forward in time, the graph will go up as long as that's still true about frequencies on either side of the particular frequency in question. And then once that stops happening, it just stays straight. So then for example, up here, if we decide to add delay to the high frequency, look, it'll go back down. Now, when we go to wrap the graph so that it looks a little bit neater and more places are at the zero mark, this is still going on in the background, don't forget. All right, so let's get a little bit nuts. I'm gonna introduce a regular EQ that does have phase shift. And you can see if I bring this high pass filter up to like 100 Hertz here, the graph changes accordingly, but we introduce some phase shift. Now, a couple of questions. We learned that this negative line here means that there's some kind of delay happening, right? So is there delay happening in this range, but like this and this are actually happening at the same time? Or, or is it like, the lows in general are delayed behind the high frequency. Remember, we could take this whole graph and just like shift it down to where this is at the zero mark and this has a negative phase shift, right? Would that mean that like the highs would be delayed and the lows are in time? Like what's happening? So let's switch gears and look at an oscilloscope. I've got a 20 Hertz sine wave playing. And if I add a delay to the test signal, you can see the white trace move to the right, okay? And then if I remove the delay, I'm bringing it forward in time back into time alignment with the yellow trace. Okay, and just for fun, I'm gonna stack 160 hertz tone on top of that, and I can just delay the 20 hertz tone itself, and you can see the ripple effect, right? The 160 hertz tone is staying in place, but the 20 hertz tone is moving back in time. Now I'm gonna move it forward in time. It's like this cool snake effect. Okay, now I can also just go and delay the 160 hertz by itself. You can see that ripple. Look how the 20 hertz is staying in place, but the 160 hertz is being delayed. And I'm bringing it forward in time here again. So let's look at what the filter does to these two frequencies. Oh, look, it shifted the 20 hertz to the left. That means it went forward in time. The 160 hertz stayed the same. And if we increase the strength of the filter even more forward in time, if we raise the frequency of the filter, look at that. It's making the 20 hertz move forward in time 
The 160 hertz is basically staying the same. It's also decreasing the amplitude. Eventually, we'll get down here to like nothing. See, look at this. The 160 hertz moved like a little bit, but not that much. But the 20 hertz basically rippled forward in time. Okay, now I've got an audio file that at 48 kilohertz has one sample uptick, and it's just on loop right now. And you can see that if I delay the test signal, it moves to the right. Okay, and if I bring it forward in time, it moves to the left. There, they're perfectly time aligned. Now I have a single cycle of 120 hertz that we can throw in here. Okay, and again, delay moves to the right, forward in time moves to the left. So I'm gonna introduce this EQ with the filter and I'm gonna sweep its frequency up and you can see that we are actually changing the shape of the waveform to kind of do this weird, like an endless staircase type of effect where it looks like it's moving forward in time as the amplitude decreases. But see, it doesn't ever go before the start of the tick, which is the beginning of the sound, right? Let's go back down and see that again. Look at how it like changes the shape. Ooh, fun. It's super weird looking, because again, it looks like it's moving forward in time, but it's not actually, it's just sort of reshaping itself. So this is why, for example, when we look at the phase graph and we see all of this phase shift that would normally look like, oh, we're experiencing delay during this range. Yeah, but we're not actually, because we don't change the start time of the sound, but we're reshaping the waveform. So as we go up in frequency here, this filter's not affecting these frequencies as much, right? And each frequency only cares about the phase of those just before and after it. So yeah, like these frequencies do look like they are getting more delayed, right? Because these lower frequencies have like shifted virtually forward in their phase. It's really weird. But yeah, that's why the graph looks like this, even though this EQ hasn't changed the time arrival of any of these frequencies. Now, keep in mind that when we have steep filters like this, we add in all this distortion that kind of happens after the start time of the sound, and it rings on afterward, and that's typically called like post ringing, and it kind of sounds like an effect if you get too much of it going on. Now, with a linear phase EQ running that same filter, let's go ahead and sweep it up here, you can see that it has anomalies as well, but they happen before and after the starting point of the sound while trying to keep the main waveform in phase as it decreases the amplitude. This is because it has a digital look ahead feature. They typically introduce a lot of latency in order to do this. So I guess the point of this video is that when you see a phase graph like this, like we need to know if this is the phase of a speaker component or whether it's the phase of some kind of EQ processing because Depending on what you're measuring, the phase graph will tell you different things. If it's a speaker, maybe it's the case that these low frequencies are actually happening at a later time. You know, maybe your system is miscalibrated, or maybe the physical weight of the cone makes low frequencies develop later than high frequencies. But if this is like a processing unit or some kind of other filter, then this may just be manipulation of the waveform that will make the phase response do this, but all the frequencies are actually happening at the same time in some sense. And so global delay won't like fix your problem. So you need to know what you're measuring before you can really make sense of the phase graph, I guess is what I'm saying.